welcome back everyone. So in previous episodes I showed you how to make that workshop and how to make this kind of power system and what we're going to go over now is kind of the basics and mechanics of Industrial Craft 2. So Industrial Craft 2 uses this power system called energy units and it's abbreviated EU and each tick an EU is generated or EU is generated by machines. So a tick, there's about 20 ticks per second in Minecraft, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And there are several ways of generating EU. They all stem from the generator. So the generator is your basic block here. The generator turns coal into EU, or charcoal, or whatever you put in it to burn. Charcoal is the most efficient way. So go for charcoal. Don't use regular coal. You need that for making solar panels. So we look at our generator and there are five machines you can make out of the generator that are useful. So you've got the water mill, which is this setup behind us. Uh, this is a very basic setup, provides unlimited free energy, but doesn't scale very well and puts a lot of stress on servers. So ask your admins how large of water mill setups you can make. Uh, solar panels, very expensive. They use three coal dust, which is three coal two electronic circuits, which is 12 copper cable and 12 rubber, and the generator, which is a lot of iron. So lots of iron, copper, rubber. And then you use solar panels, you can combine them to make bigger and better solar panels, thus condensing the number of machines that generate the same amount of EU. So solar panels are very efficient. And once you have the resources, I do recommend switching over to solar power. Uh, your end game objective is actually to make high voltage solar panels. They're better than nuclear reactors, they're better than everything. They always produce high voltage power, they won't blow up, they won't run out. You don't have to maintain them, so go for those. These are windmills. Windmills generate power based on how high they are. The higher the windmill, the more power it generates. Uh, I did some testing, so if you're around 90 height, you get about half an EU per tick. If you're at 130, you get one and a half. And I believe the 130 range is about where you want to put your windmills so that they generate lots of power without blowing up. If you produce too much power, they'll explode, and they produce double power in thunderstorms, so you do have to be wary about that when placing them. Nuclear reactors and geothermal power will get their own episodes, but nuclear reactors turn uranium into power with the risk of blowing up. Geothermal generators, you put lava in them, and they work fine. And transporting the lava to them is the key to running a successful geothermal generator setup. So this right here is a basic water power setup. It just feeds uh, water into water mills to generate power. There's another episode all about that. And we're going to use that to show our examples today. So what we're going to cover is, or are I suppose, uh, what happens when you overload machines to kind of emphasize medium, high, low, and extremely high voltage current, so low, medium, high, um, what the differences are, what the numbers are. EU storage, so this is an MFE, there's some other machines. Uh, we just covered how to make EU, uh, what different cables do and when you should use which and I'm going to go over wrenches and just some examples of what to do and what not to do. So we'll start with EU storage. So this is an MFE and we're going to combine this with talking about uh, current. So the MFE is a medium voltage storage device. So you can put up to medium voltage into it and a little more but as a safety precaution, I would not put more than 128 EU per tick into any face of the MFE. So all storage devices have five input faces where they can take current in. Each face can take up to 128 current. And they have one output face, this colored face or unique face, that sends it out. And you can look at the device and it tells you how much it sends out. So MFE is medium voltage. A bat box is low voltage. Uh, it can accept up to 48 EU per tick, so if I hook it up to here, it won't blow up. I have exactly 48 things. 
and notice there's 48 EU per tick going into it. So the other option you have is the MFSU, which just stands for a really big storage unit. And this can store up to 10 million EU. It can take high electric uh, EU in, so it can take up to 512, and it can output up to 512. And it can actually take a little more than 512, but again, you, you do not want to blow up your machines. It raise, poses the risk of damaging the machine and losing the machine itself. So you could destroy the block completely or it will drop as like an advanced machine block and you'll lose a lot of resources you invested. So we're going to continue on. That's how you generate power, that's how you store it. Now we're going to talk about how you transfer power. So these are cables, this is glass fiber cable I'm looking at, and different cables have different conductivity. So your basic starting cable is this copper cable, and I'm going to show you what happens if you hook up copper cable to more current than it can carry. So a copper cable can carry 32 EU per tick of current. So if I attach another MFE, I got rid of them didn't I? Nope. To this, it's going to put out 128 through this cable. This cable is fine, it can carry up to 512 EU per tick. This one has um, a capacity limit of 32, so let's see what happens. And as you can see, it vaporizes. So it's completely destroyed, I lost all my copper, all my rubber, obviously very bad. And the way around that is this thing called an LV transformer, and this stands for low voltage. So I'm going to put this here, and the way it works is this colored face is the input. So you put in your medium voltage current, and it steps it down to low voltage current. So all of these outputs now output low voltage current. And if I put my bat box here, it does not break. But glass fiber cable transmits current a lot better than I um copper cable. So if I make two equally long paths, let's see uh pink, diagonal, 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 diagonal. So these are equidistant, they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight long. So I put a bat box at the end of this, I measure the current, it's getting one twenty four EU per tick. And it's still low current, low voltage, 124. I don't know why it's saying it's 124. I can't actually guarantee that's right. Now I put it over here, and we look, and we've got 128. So as you can see, you lost 4 EU per tick along this length of copper, whereas over here you did not. And I am a little more curious about this, so I'm going to put a bat box here, and we're going to measure this again. So now we're not getting anything because this bat box has to fill up first. God damn it. This is not a bat box. So now this is filling. It should be outputting energy to here. So it is not yet. This is already full, that's why. So now we measure it again, and as you can see, we've got 32 going into it. We'll look over here, and now we've got 31 going into it. This makes more sense. So when I stepped it down from the 128 to this, we saw a loss of 4, but if you notice, 128 is 4 times 32. So the loss of 4 was because of this hidden power of 4 hiding in here. So I'm a math major if you can't tell. And so different cable do different jobs. The copper cable we just talked about loses 1 EU per tick every 8 blocks. This cable I'm destroying loses 1 EU per tick every 40 blocks. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of, that's different. That's a very pronounced difference. So now we're going to go over machines and what kind of power they can handle. So I'm actually going to move this down. So 
we make our workshop and this is something we always have to keep in mind. So let's say I have a macerator and I put it down and it's connected to medium voltage current. Um, so it's connected to medium voltage current. And it doesn't feel like doing it right now. So we're going to try that again. Boom! There we go. So uh, I think what happened there was the block didn't update, so it didn't blow up. So we've got that little explosion. We put in this rotary macerator. We get a much larger explosion. So more advanced machines blow up more strongly. And if you notice, I did not pick up my rotary macerator when it exploded. I got back this advanced machine block. And when my normal macerator exploded, I did not get one back at all. So when your machine breaks, there's a chance it will either drop itself, drop the machine block, or drop the nothing. So let's say we don't want to blow up our machine. We have two ways of doing this. We can take the LV transformer, we can add in here, we position it like so, put the macerator down, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to just use the regular macerators for these demonstrations. So our other option is we break the current. I'm going to put the macerator here. Uh, my game's going to crash, so we'll be right back. Uh, this does happen with industrial craft. Sometimes when you place machines, it breaks, and it's really sad. So there's my error message and BRB. Okay, so now we're back, and this macerator should have properly placed. Uh, this is an obnoxious bug, and it does happen quite a bit. And Alright, so there it is. So, macerator down, macerator broken, now macerator down. So what this is, is this is a transformer upgrade. And it converts current from, or it increases the current capacity of the macerator. So the macerator is normally a low voltage machine. This ups it from low voltage to medium voltage and upgrade stack. So if I add a second one, it would upgrade from medium to high. And I th I think you can even go up to extremely high voltage, but I actually I don't think you can. So we do have some other upgrades here. We have overclocker upgrades. So I'm going to put six of these in here. And what these do is they speed up how quickly the machine works. So that's not what I want. But there's a catch with these which is the more of these upgrades you add, the more internal energy the machine requires. So I'm just going to add some of these internal energy storage and what this internal energy storage does is it increases how much kind of battery the machine has. So this should be charging but it's not. and it does have power going into it. So anyways, this lightning bolt here represents the internal energy storage of the machine, and this will increase, or, oh yeah, you can see a little dot there now. So, um, hypothetically, we'll say that the internal energy of this macerator is 6 EU per tick. All right, and without any upgrade, it requires 4 EU per tick to run. And these numbers are completely made up. So when I add these overclockers, it changes how much energy the machine needs to run. It needs more. We'll just simplify it to that. And if you don't keep your internal energy storage consistent, upgraded with your overclockers, eventually you'll start drawing more power from the machine than it can store inside it and it will constantly turn on and off, on and off, on and off, and it will either bug and ultra-produce crap for you, or just not produce very quickly, and it's usually the latter. You'll just very inefficiently macerate things. And these overclockers are incredibly powerful, so I will upgrade to rotary macerators as soon as I can, but 
you can upgrade your normal macerators with overclockers to macerate fairly quickly too. So I add some ore to here. I'm going to put down a bonus one too. So we'll just compare the processing speed. So I put this in here. I put it in there. I put it in here. We watch it. It macerates. There, did one operation. This guy's almost halfway done with his first one. So adding six of these doubled the speed almost. It was a little faster than that actually. Maybe tripled it. So those are upgrades. Transformers to get more power, overclocker to get more speed, internal energy storage to keep up with it. And these do stack, so the six overclockers is different than one overstock clocker, 64 storage upgrade is different than one. So there's that. And the last bit of information to cover will be wrenches. So I have my wrenches with me. Oh. Yeah, good enough. So we'll clear up this. I need something to wrenchify. And we'll go with regular macerators. So you put your block down and let's say this is what you have and you don't want it oriented this way. You want this red face somewhere else. So you can take out either your regular wrench, your prototype omni wrench, or your electric wrench. So you can right click with this wrench and it'll change where the face is. You right click the red face to pick it up. Same thing with the prototype omni wrench. Sometimes the omni wrench bugs and doesn't work quite right away and you might have to reload to see the graphic change on the face. Um, but if you double click it will still pick up. So just keep in mind that it doesn't always graphically show what you've done but it has done it. And then the electric wrench uses EU to perform operations so that used a little bit of EU to pick the block up. Now our other concern is picking blocks up. So if you pick a like a machine up with I'm gonna leave it here so I don't accidentally break it again with a pickaxe it will literally break and drop a machine block so you'll lose some of the materials you've invested in it if you pick it up with a wrench it will usually drop as a macerator but every now and then you'll get a machine block and that's about a 20 percent drop rate so you will lose machines picking it up with the regular thing. With the electric wrench you've got this lossless wrench mode so you bind your mode switch key uh, we'll find it quick, mode switch key, Q and I'm just going to quick turn off this rain but you hold down Q you right click and it changes your mode and lots of things have modes so test it, I know the jetpack does and the uh, mining laser does so I'm going to pick this up in lossless wrench mode and the block will never break but it does use 10,000 EU to pick up. So that's expensive. Then your alternative is the prototype Omni Wrench. So I'm just going to hold down the prototype Omni Wrench and right click because sometimes it doesn't pick up right away. And you will always pick up. You'll never get a machine block back when you do that. So the Omni Wrench is ridiculously powerful. So let's say you have insufficient power. Then you're going to get something that looks like so put the gold in now notice how slowly it's charging and I broke this block so that it wouldn't have enough power so it the bat box is struggling to just fill this power thing, but once this gets full, you'll notice the bat box will start filling up. And this is a good example of what else I wanted to talk about. When you build a power setup, you can calculate beforehand how much power you'll need to run things. But I'm going to break this now. Just You can calculate how much power you need to run things. You can look up on the Tech at Light wiki at techatlightwikia.com or something like that. And look up the value of each of the machines you plan on using and how much energy they use and the key is that machines use different amounts of power depending on what they're doing so the, the key example is the induction furnace and it might be the only example 
but the induction furnace uses a lot of power when it's operating but not a lot of power to stay at its operating speed so if you don't have enough power to run the generator that's or the induction furnace that's okay if you have an MFE because your MFE has 600,000 units of extra power for you and that means you have to use up that 600,000 units before you run into any problem and unless you're doing a really large scale operation you're not going to hit that bridge so as long as you have a large enough buffer you don't need absurd amounts of power and so I cut this off because I didn't actually want to generate that kind of buffer so what I want to show you right now is what happens when you have not enough power so this is actually working which bothers me so we're just gonna break another one So now we should start seeing an energy loss so energy is dropping 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 and I didn't want to break it all the way because I want to show insufficient energy so what's gonna happen is this is gonna run out of power and this is gonna keep sending one EU of tick of power to the bat box and the bat box is going to get it, it's going to send it over here, but it won't be enough to run the machine. So the machine is going to turn on and off really quickly. And now we'll start seeing that once this thing's internal battery runs out. So the internal battery is dropping. Dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, I'll make sure I don't have anything else to see. So yeah, this is the last thing to cover. So we'll show what happens when you run out of electrical juice. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you before I leave, and I don't think so. So, all right, we're going to run out now, and you'll hear it wind down and then keep winding on and off. So there we go, and you can see the machine turning on and off. It is still operating, but much slower. So this is a sign that you don't have enough power and obviously this is bad but again now we have plenty of power the bat box is generating power and now we can just operate off this buffer so as long as you have this buffer everything will be okay so the setup I will show in my episode on how to make an advanced workshop with bigger and better machines will have induction furnaces in it that use a lot of power so idly the shop uses 14 EU per tick actively it will use 48 having a water mill setup of like 20 water mills that's fine that will run that shop without any problem as long as you don't burn ore for like 20 minutes and by 20 minutes I really mean Oh, I did the calculation earlier. So, a tick, there's 20 ticks per second. If you need 30, 48 EU instead of 14, that's, what, 34? Yep, so you've got 600,000 EU stored in an MFE. We'll assume you start at full capacity. Then 600,000 divided by 34 EU per tick is... Eh, around 15,000. It's a little less than that, maybe like 12,000. So that's 6,000 seconds you have, which is, what, 100 minutes? So you could run it for an hour. No problem. And that concludes this episode. So that's the basics of industrial craft. Uh, my, Your takeaway advice from this should be really to plan out beforehand how much power you'll need go to the wiki look up exactly how much power you'll need uh, and what cables you should use I like fiberglass cables because they transmit high voltage current with or I guess technically medium voltage current with um, no problems really far your alternatives are to compact your system so that you output energy and
manageable packets and that you can use less powerful cable or that the distance each cable travels is minimized. And if you like graph theory, there are lots of fun math problems here for you to solve. I do not like graph theory, by the way. So, there we have it. I'm going to call it a day, and good luck with your workshops.